Tuesday, September 26, 2023. Curbing recent security breaches, government to block data leakers website. First workaholics treatment center to open in 2024. No phone, no laptop, just rest. Beachgoers report silver algae blooming on Alki Beach. Hello everyone, my name is Jasirium, and I bid you all a warm welcome back to another episode of Let's Play Coffee Talk, episode 2. Hibiscus and Butterfly. In the last episode, we had another run-in with Amanda and Silver, as well as that agent. <coughs> Sorry, had to sneeze, but anyways, everything's all taken care of now, so... Let's not waste any more time and get started. <coughs> Sorry. Anyways, moving on. Huh, something's missing from the drawer. Wait, what? Uh... Okay, there's only two things in here now. Okay. Did I misplace it? Um, hmm. somehow I feel like it's going to be a long, long night. Or not. Good evening. just the other day. Ah, that's right. Did he tell you the reason for his visit? Yeah, he's moving back here, right? Or, at least, that's the plan. Yes, what a nice surprise! He told me he's got a few things to discuss on that. Well, it's part of why I'm Aside from getting myself a hot drink, that is. On that note, I'm so ready to take your order. Much obliged. So, uh, Henry told me about this Indonesian ginger drink. Uh, it has milk, honey, and a couple other stuff in it. I think it's called STMJ? Yeah, that is correct. Let's see, where is that STMJ? Ah, it was milk, ginger, and honey. Okay. Wait, hang on. Let me see. Uh, milk, ginger, and honey. Yeah. Just had to confirm. Alright, milk, ginger, honey. And serving. One nutritious drink from the archipelago coming up. Archipelago. Thanks a lot. Mm. 
So what's in it again? It's a hot blend of egg, milk, ginger, and honey. The drink's name itself is the ingredients. Susu telur madu jahi. Milk, egg, honey, and ginger. No wonder it somewhat reminds me of eggnog. Albeit spicier and not as rich. But I can see why Henry likes it. It's a great stamina drink! He probably needs it to keep up with Rachel's work. You're probably right. As long as he remembers to take breaks. Maybe I should invite him for a drink here sometime. What do you think? That would be lovely! Then consider it done. You know what? I don't think Hyde will show up tonight. Oh? Why is that? When I called him earlier to confirm, he sounded a little... annoyed. And it's not exactly great outside either. I thought he liked this kind of weather. Him? Yes. His car? Not so much. That thing wouldn't survive this kind of storm. Now that you mention it... <clears throat> now that you mention it, you may be right. I used to drive him in that car back in the day. Did he ever tell you how old it is? Yep. Gave me the whole backstory of it. Oh. I guess I'm just surprised he still uses it at all. The car clearly holds a special meaning to him. He was also quite sentimental about it. Which makes me wonder if it has anything to do with him moving back here. What do you mean? He lived here before, right? Yeah. And he kept bringing up the past, too. Are you saying his move is motivated by nostalgia? I was going to say homesickness. But I realize that makes no sense. I get what you're trying to say, though. It's the strange longing for times gone by. Considering how fast things are changing these days. Maybe even too fast. Which is ironic, really. What is? Live long enough, you'll realize the only constant in life is change itself. Things like shifting necessities, curveballs the world throws at you, decay, just stuff we have to deal with indefinitely. Considering our lifespans, you'd think we'd get used to it at some point. But we never do. Never completely, anyway. I suppose the idea of getting used to change is a paradox in and of itself. <laughs> that sounds about right. Perhaps nostalgia is like an anchor for dinosaurs like us. It keeps us from losing ourselves in the world's relentless speed. You get used to these after a while, huh? Pretty much. Oh, hello. Oh, hey there. You meet again. Yes, hello. Excuse me for a moment. Got it. Welcome, Miss Riona. Good evening. I'm meeting up with someone. Oh, okay then. How is your car, by the way? My car? Oh, you mean the tire. There's really no need for concern as it was an easy fix. But thank you for asking. My pleasure. May I order a cup of Russian tea? Uh, sure. Just give me a moment to look up the recipe for a moment. There is that recipe. Ah, here it is. Tea, lemon, and cinnamon. Okay. One tea. 
one lemon, one cinnamon, and brewing. Here you go. One Russian tea for the lady, Russian to deliver. <laughs> That's a good one. This is perfect, by the way. Thank you. You're welcome. So, uh, who are you meeting with, if I may ask? Hmm. You should know, shouldn't you? After all, you were tasked to give me his contact info. Ah, uh, damn it! Ah, so you two connected in the end. I'm sorry I failed to give his contact info to you. It's fine. He sent me a message last night through my private social media. Which both surprised and confused me. I mean, how did he find my account? I heard you can find just about anything online nowadays if you know your way around. So it's probably an internet thing. That sounds a bit worrisome. What about people's privacy? Yeah, that's a valid concern. All we can do now is to consider carefully what we put out there, I suppose. Right. Then I wonder, what does he want from me? <laughs> yeah, so Hyde's not coming tonight. Probably for the best, given the circumstances. Is he okay? Yeah, he just wants to take it easy tonight. Understandable. My apologies for these surges. I was hoping it'd become more stable as the days go by, but... No need to apologize for something out of your control. That's right. You tried everything you could. I know. Thank you for your understanding. How are you doing, miss? Hey there. Did you manage to resolve your issues with children? Uh, sorry? Oh, I mean the hospital admission problem from the other day. Oh, that. For a minute there, I thought I had a beef with kids I was unaware of. Sorry for the misunderstanding. No worries, that was funny. It's only been a few days, so not much has changed. How about you? Feeling better? Ah, yes. Well... I apologize for the way I acted a few days ago. We all have our bad days, so don't worry about it. Thank you. Ah, while we're on the topic... I told Officer Georgie what happened to your car. Would you mind pointing out where you believe the incident took place? Sure. It was quite near the police station, actually. At a metered stop, just outside the now-defunct library. Oh, the vacant building at the Bourne intersection? Yes, that's correct. I see. So it was originally a library. You know the area? I know of the property, yeah. It's been abandoned for a long time now. But it's a heritage building, so I often wonder why nothing's being done with it. Since it's located in a very populated, culture-centric neighborhood... That's true. There's even an art college nearby. Right. Then again, I've always found the street a bit... odd. Odd how? It's just... barren. Especially if you consider the area. And the weird thing is... I feel like it wasn't always that way. Feel? Don't you mean remember? Nope. Ex 
exactly what I said. It's a feeling, not a clear memory. Strange, isn't it? That is odd. Well, there used to be a flea market there a long, long time ago. Perhaps that is what you were recalling. A flea market, huh? Uh. Last time I drove there, I remember seeing nothing but concrete. Oh wait! There was a single dead tree surrounded by strange trinkets. A dead tree, huh? No idea why. I almost forgot about it. It stuck out like a sore thumb. About eight feet tall, no leaves. It's been there forever too, as far as I know. That Hawthorne tree was something of a landmark for us drivers. And the trinkets he spoke of were actually remembrances of sorts. Remembrances? Hold on, I'm just going to recap a bit here, okay? Sure. Your car was vandalized near a metered parking spot in front of an abandoned library. On a seemingly deserted street within a busy area that has a large dead tree surrounded by remembrances for some reason. Sounds about right, except the tree is no longer there. Are you serious, Pops? Why wouldn't I be? That is crazy! Good evening, gentlemen. Hey, everyone! Oh, boy. I thought I'd be early, but you're already here, lady. Hello. You go to door for the love of all things holy. Tell me my lighter is here. Yeah, it is. Well, you're in luck, because it is. Ah, oh, damn. Thank goodness. Would you like me to get it now for you? Nah, it's fine. I'm just glad to know it's here. Just bring it with my drink later. Sure, let me know when you're ready to order. Cheers. Well, well, well. What's up, y'all? What's new? Evening, officer. We were just talking about the spot where Miss Riona's car may have been vandalized. Oh. They got your car too, lady? Yes, but it's not a big issue. Still, sorry you had to experience that. Where did you park your car, miss? I can send you the coordinates if you'd like. That'd be real swell. Got it. Okay. Oh. Is it within the area you expected, or...? Pretty much. The same location where I parked mine a week ago. I see. You can rest assured, we already increased patrols in that area. That's great. But I'm the only one doing it at the moment. That sucks. <laughs> What's that? I... Am I hearing you, out of all people, doubting my skill, Hugo Tador? No, of course not! I just thought it means an unfortunate increase to your workload. Ah, well, them's the brakes, I suppose. Anyway, give me your strongest espresso, Hugo Tador. And don't forget my lighter. Alright. Right, so... Coffee, coffee, coffee! Brewing, and let's not forget the lighter. Always remember the lighter. There it is. Thanks, Hugo Tidor. You probably think I'm being silly, but what can I say? It's my lucky charm. Yeah, yeah. It's borderline superstitious, I know. Don't you have anything of the sort? Well, I have good reason. 
to be superstitious. Whenever I don't have this with me, things happen. Right. Alright, here comes the strongest espresso in the house. Cheers. Ah, perfect as always. Are you ready to order? Might as well. I'd like something desserty. Because it's my cheat day. Sure thing. Any specifics in mind? Well, I saw this video of a Spanish hot cocoa yesterday. It was so thick I thought it was chocolate sauce. The name also reminded me of a song, but for some reason I can't remember the title right now. You know, that sounds oddly familiar. For real? Then I'll have that thick cocoa. It's got milk and a little hot and spicy kick to it. I see, so chocolate, milk, and ginger. Okay. Let's see, chocolate, milk, and ginger. And let's brew. Here you go. Here comes a cup of Spanish Sahara for you. Oh, so that's what it's called. That's what we call it here, at least. Very cool. Then, bon appetit. Mmm. <laughs> I think this is it. Very tasty. Thanks, Hugo Tador. You're so welcome. So, Pops. Just earlier, you were telling me about your creepy patrolling experience, right? Was it in the same location where the lady's car was? Creepy patrolling experience? Well... I don't know if I should even talk about it. Because maybe it's just a tad too spooky. Even for me. What happened? Tell him, Pops. It's not that big a deal, honestly. Then all the more reason to talk about it, right? Maybe someone here will know something. You've got a point there. Y'all were talking about the area anyway, right? Yep. Well, I've been patrolling there the past few nights. The street itself is fairly straightforward. It's about half a minute round trip from the intersection and back. There's nothing much there either. Concrete sidewalk with metered parking spots. Fence here and there. And an unfinished construction site with a couple CCTVs dotted about. No tree? What tree? There used to be a dead tree in front of the old library. Huh? Oh! That old dead tree! It was uprooted by the city back in January. The commercial community decided it wasn't really a good look. So when the city started a massive cleanup project last year, well, they simply voted to get rid of it. I see. Why? What's up? We were actually talking about it earlier, and, uh... Being a decades-old landmark aside, could there be something more to the tree than just, well, being old? You think so? That's what I think after listening to Miss Riona. Are you expecting something from me, Hugo Tidor? Huh? Oh, no, no. I'm sorry if I crossed the line. You just seem to know a lot about it, and I don't want to mix up the facts. I understand. 
But I would like to hear the officer's spooky tale first, if you don't mind. Gladly, miss. Almost forgot about me there, huh? So, anyway, patrolling on that street is an easy task. Only four or five cars would park there overnight at most. Which makes keeping track a breeze. Sounds ideal enough. As expected, though, nothing happened the first two nights. But... Yesterday was a different story. Whoa! Hold on! Uh, what? A stage setup, eh? Ah, <laughs> oh, phew! There you go! Goodness. Sorry about that. Please continue. Alrighty. Well, it was nearing the end of my shift and I found nothing was amiss. There were only four cars parked that night. Two spaced across the street and two on the opposite corner, side by side. My plan was to leave after I walk one last round to make sure everything was okay. And a reminder, you can cover the whole place in only eight minutes. Okay. Then at the end of my walk, I took a drag on my cigarette, smug as I was about to clock out, thinking twas another night job well done. Right? Wrong. As I was immediately faced with the impossible. Three cars. Two side by side, one across the street. All tires flattened. That's twelve vandalized tires for you. In a span of less than ten minutes. That is so strange. It would take several minutes to flatten just one tire. And that's if you're using the right tools. Right. But that wasn't all. Oh no, it wasn't. Because that was the moment when the street lights went out, suddenly and all at once. What? Right after that, I heard flurries of footsteps and laughter. They were going farther and farther away from the scene, and yet, I saw nothing at all. Oh. Are you sure? Did the CCTV catch anything? The infrareds actually managed to catch something. But the videos weren't clear at all, so I'm still investigating that. Okay, so apparently what you're saying, the vandals are ghosts. Jeez Louise Pops, that's way spookier than what you told me in the car. But it's cool though. <laughs> I may be laughing now, but I almost pissed my pants there, you see. Well, well, whoever they were, they sure worked fast. Right. Anyway, Hugo Tidor, I think I want another drink. All that talking is making my throat dry. And coffee just ain't cutting it. Okay, let's see. Where is... Ah, okay. Roger that. What would you like? What do you suggest? How about some tea with ginger and honey? Sounds good. Can you use the red flower stuff you have as a base? You mean hibiscus, definitely. Okay, then I'd like red flower tea with ginger and a touch of honey. Okay, so, hibiscus, ginger, and honey. Hibiscus, gin, all right. 
hibiscus, ginger, and I don't know if I'm doing this in the correct order, but let's see. One piping hot Tejahirosella for you. Oh, what does it mean? Shahi means ginger, te means tea, and Rosella is Rusel, another name for hibiscus. I see. A legit herbal drink. Spicy, but perfect for the weather. Good call, Hugo Tidor. I'm happy to please. If that's the case, let me join your patrol pops. Cause I'm not scared of ghosts. Real beings scare me more. Wait a sec, kid. What do you mean by ghosts, eh? Jumping, jumping the gun a little there, ain't ya? <laughs> I don't know, pops. Maybe it's even something crazier than that. This is a really serious problem, kid. Don't joke around like that. Sorry. Interesting. You know something? No, not me. But she might. Right. The tree, wasn't it? Oh yeah. What about it, miss? It's your turn to finish your thought. I'm not sure if this can be any use at all, but... Officer? Are you aware of the story behind that tree? Huh? I recall what you said earlier. People often leave remembrances around it. What do you mean by that, miss? Well, it's because someone passed away there. What? Allow me to explain. I mentioned there was once a flea market on that street, correct? Right. They called it the Fairy Market. It was unofficially set up by the transients of the community. Transients being the government's term for unregistered citizens. Including all the other uncategorizable beings at the time. Fairies were a part of that. Huh? I remember learning about it. After the war, the government made its first official attempt to sort things out. Organizing equitable classifications was thought as one of the first steps towards civil peace. But it was oversimplified, inefficient, and not speedy enough. Was all that before the Vindication Act? Way before that. Many who couldn't register were basically in administrative limbo. What? That's as good as, like, not existing at all? Really, that's horrible! It was the main reason why the fairy market was created in the first place. To ensure transient survival throughout the changing times. In more ways than one. The market had no real schedule, therefore, the start of Fairy Week would be marked by flowers strewn along the intersection, just so people would notice and come and take a look. Sounds kinda too low-key, no? Because it was illegal, silly. Oh. And that was exactly the problem. The market ran day and night, its format unchanging. At the same time, the economy was slowly reshaping the landscape. People started to spend more, becoming reckless. While the laws were still shaky at best. Huh? Then a tragic incident occurred one night. A drunk driver was speeding and went off course, striking a vendor there. 
and the only evidence left of the crime was that tree standing where there was no tree before. Wait a second. What? Why did I never hear about it? How long ago was this? The accident occurred in 1959, but the market itself was forcefully disbanded in 1961. Happened before I was born, huh? Yeah, I remember everything now. It was actually quite an infamous case, wasn't it? But due to the nature of the beings involved, most people couldn't help but, well, forget. Huh? We're talking about the late 50s to early 60s here. Post-war media was still quite scarce. And I remember the drunk driver was also the son of a very wealthy individual. Oh. Correct. Correct. But that wasn't exactly the part that made the case so infamous. It was due to the fact that no body was ever found at the crash site, as well as the vendor being a transient with no legal ID or paper trail. As a result, the court had no choice but to dismiss the case. But there was a body, wasn't it? Just not the one people might expect? You mean... the tree? Right. When semi-spiritual beings like us pass on from the vis- from the vis- From the physical world, I cannot speak tonight! Some may leave specific landmarkers behind. Not all can do that, though. Us banshees don't do that. You don't? No. We simply disappear. So, if I'm getting this right, the tree couldn't be used as evidence because it wasn't classified as remains yet. The witnesses were in the same boat. No paper trail. So, the driver's lawyer took advantage of those loopholes. And that's messed up. BEYOND MESSED UP, POPS! Whoa! I'm boiling! I'll take a further look into this more, miss. But I have a question for you. Yes? You think the vandalism has anything to do with the tree removal? I don't know. I suppose it might depend on when the act of vandalism began. Yeah, that makes sense. Well, I better get going then. It's almost time for my shift. Okay, officer. Recollect, Pops. I'd rather not. Stay safe. Will do. I'll keep y'all posted. I better go as well. Got an early shift tomorrow. There's one thing I want to confirm, though, if you don't mind, miss. Yes? It's about the fairies passing and how everyone ends up forgetting about them afterwards. I really thought that was just a myth. I guess not? Unfortunately. That is why there used to be memorabilia around that tree. They were efforts by those who remembered to preserve the memory. But it wasn't enough, was it? Else, we'd still have the tree. It really makes me question my memory. Are there any people I might have forgotten? Were there events I missed? Is it quite scary to think about? For beings like us, being forgotten is inevitable. So, no need to feel bad about it. Is that so? Oh, I didn't catch your name, by the way. I'm Gala. 
Oh, I'm Lucas. Nice to meet you, sir. Ellen, nice meeting you. Good luck with your future auditions, Miss Fiona. Thank you. See you around. Bye, Hugo Tidor. Take care. You okay? It's getting real late. I still want to talk, but if you're tired, let me know. Have you eaten? Do you want something to eat? We don't sell food here. You don't? No wonder your place is always empty. Well... Just kidding. Hugo Tador, don't hate me, please. Well, do you want another drink, maybe? Hmm... I wouldn't mind one. Okay, just let me get my... little... thing I have, my bob. Nice! What do you feel like having? Something without milk. With a fresh feeling and some brightness. I'm also quite partial to the blue PT. Oh. Oh. Let's see, Riona. We'll get... Alright, causing her. Alright. Let's see. Okay, I'll order something for you. May I? Sure. You go to door? Could you try this mix? I saw this pretty drink in a video, and it looked perfect for our lady. Yep, what is it? It has blue pea as a base, a lot of mint, and a splash of lemon. Okay. Okay, blue tea as a base. Alright, blue pea as a base. Mint and lemon. Okay, and brewing and serving. Here you go, miss. And the man sitting right beside you. <laughs> Looks nice, very pretty. Thank you. I'm glad to do. And wow, Hugo Tador, it looks exactly like what I envisioned. You're a G. I'm happy you both enjoyed it. But man, that whole case earlier, though. It was a lot to take in. Also, about the whole forgetting thing, that really gave me chills. Why? Ugh. Don't you feel scared of just disappearing in the end? Because hmm. I do. That's why I thought I finally understood you too. I mean, the reason why you wanted to become a soprano your way. The traditional way. Oh, care to compare notes? Because I've yet to be entirely certain about that myself. Oh, huh. Now that's what you call huge pressure. Before that though, can I ask a little teeny tiny question? Go ahead. What inspired you to go down this path? I mean, I may have an idea on why you're choosing the hard way, but why a soprano in the first place? Because it's been done before. Oh, do elaborate. But first, give me a moment. Alright, continue. Pardon? Because there was already a banshee who did it before. So, I know it's not impossible. Oh, for real? Her part was that of a sorbet area, and she was not very well known. What is a sorbet area? Oh. I mean, she was a secondary character. 
Back in early 19th century opera, sorbet arias would be sung towards the end of the second act, usually before the evening ended. Hawkers would use the time to offer their wares for the last time to the patrons. Often desserts. Hence, sorbet area. Oh, I see. Like background singing at the end of a show or something? Yes. Things are different nowadays because people are expected to listen to the end. The first time I heard her voice was on an old recording of a comedy opera. I was still very young back then. She was playing a confused maid role at the very end of the opera, wondering why and how people could act so crazy when in love. But despite her confusion, she thought she wasn't so old that she couldn't find out the reason of her soul. There was a funny epilogue to the opera, but hearing a banshee sing such a playful and light-hearted piece, it was truly an eye-opener for me. Oh man, I bet it was. Sadly, I couldn't find any of her other works, but it always stuck with me nonetheless. So I left my commune and started trying on my own. That's really cool and brave of you to do so. I agree. I have never talked about this before. beyond what's expected of you, and wishing to leave a mark on this world. Is that what you think? Uh-huh. You're just trying to follow a path that has been traveled before, and that's not always a bad thing, especially for beings like us. You're just being careful yet courageous. Right, because the path you're choosing to walk is on... That you're... <clears throat> right, because the path you're choosing to walk on is still difficult. Hmm. Regarding leaving your mark, I don't know. I just feel maybe you're the same as me. Like, what's the point of being bored if nobody is going to remember us? Right, Hugo Tidor? No comment. Why do you want to be remembered so much? Why wouldn't you? Us banshees see the end differently than most. So, care to enlighten me? Uh, I, I can't speak for anyone else, but in my case, I was a kid who grew up in a large family, you see. Like, humongously large. Literally couldn't count all my siblings, even if I wanted to. Because they're everywhere, thanks to my dad. Oh. We weren't wealthy, though. Not even close. The money situation was always suffocating us, for real. But sometimes, Dad would drop by to give us some money. Though, it wasn't even enough to cover utilities for more than a couple months. Then he'd just leave again a couple days later. Are you the eldest? Nope. But my older bros had already moved out by the time I hit high school. I was so surprised when my dad gave me the house after he died. Oh. Which is where my mom and siblings live now. I'm sorry to hear about your father. 
No, no, it's fine. I, I mean, yeah, it was weird to receive the news of his death from an attorney, knowing he passed away by himself, and how it took them a week to find out. Oh. Natural causes, by the way, so... I mean, how did he check out with absolutely no one knowing? Where were my other siblings? What happened to his ladies? It was just so crazy to me. And I guess it just kinda haunted me. Oh, I see. Haunted how? My life growing up was filled with disappointment over him, you know? I mean, I mean it in the best way possible. My disappointment actually drove me to work hard for my family. I just vilified him in my mind, like shaking my mental fist at him. Gonna do so much better than you, sir, and all that. <laughs> I see. But then, I received the news that he left me the house. Like, I know he had no money. That house is probably one of the only assets he had left. So when he gave me the house in his will, all I could think about was, what went through his mind exactly? Hmm. The fact that he had a will at all was probably already a surprise for you. I exactly. What am I supposed to think of that? What am I supposed to think of him? And does it even matter anymore? When he's already long gone? Anyway, uh... So my older brothers came back, right? They wanted me to sell the house and divide the earnings. Wanting a slice of the inheritance pie, huh? You didn't do that, right? Heck no! That's why I left for LA. So if they really want me to sell the house, they have to chase after me. Good call. Thankfully, my younger siblings and I are pretty tight. We're a good team. That's a relief. But that was also why I needed money fast. I needed to send money to help with my family's bills. And of course, so I could stay alive as well. That was why I ended up having to join the production house. The... The production house? Yeah, it was like a... A bunch of content creators getting together to make videos every day. I was young and naive too, you know? Because it was my first time venturing to another state completely alone after all. So I didn't know better how predatory things could be. Man, this isn't even gonna be an entertaining story. If you're uncomfortable, you don't have to talk about it. No, no, it's not that. I just really, really didn't like that production house. But I needed the money. Someone there saw my vlogs and invited, and invited me in. And as one of the youngest there, I tried to get along with everyone. But you see, we were all creators in the entertainment industry, right? Which means we all had huge, huge egos. So naturally, there was somewhat of a hierarchy of sorts. Trying to be all around helpful turned me into the butt of the joke all the time. That didn't discourage me all that much, by the way. I mean, I also learned a lot there, not gonna lie. Still. But what ended up destroying my willpower was actually something real close, you know? Myself. What do you mean by that? Well, in a house where everyone wants to be the main character, each of us would need a solid, distinct persona, yeah? Eventually, I was assigned one too, which was supposed to be a good thing, but 
They wanted me to be the worst version of what I am, essentially. With heavy emphasis on what. I had a lot of nicknames, too, like... Hey, a baby goat! What are you up to now, Sater Boy? How comes the party, goaty? Mr. Excess... <clears throat> you gonna go fishing again tonight, or what? Fishing? Ugh. We had to go out and try to hit on people. And we weren't allowed to come home unless we failed spectacularly or scored. Oh! I always, always tried to be the punchline, though. Because there were always more views when something ended badly. But it was still the worst, because I really had to act it all out, you know? Bothering people for pretend dates would be sort of a dumb jerk just for jokes. Just so all looked fun for the camera. Even if scripted, I never really liked doing it, honestly. Because, in the end, all of it just reminded myself of my dad, you know? And I kept thinking, does the apple never fall far from the tree after all? Ugh. So yeah, the whole thing just really, 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 really sucked. You had it difficult. Yeah? Well, long story short, being tokenized sucked. The end. No disagreement there. Sorry, I swear that wasn't what I wanted to talk to you about. It's fine. I actually learned a lot this evening. Ah, uh, uh, I, uh, I just don't want to take up more of your time. So, can I ask... So, can I just ask you a direct question? Sure. Great. Would you be interested in guest starring in... Great. Would you be interested in guest starring on my new show? Ah. I realized I was being done the day we first met. I kind of forced my thoughts on you and was just being a general smartass. I undermined your straightforward efforts because I was jealous of your solid resolve. Since everything I did was anything but. Hmm. But you succeeded eventually, didn't you? And you worked hard for it. Yet I almost ended up losing sight of why I'd been doing all this in the first place. I went with flow, made excuses a lot. All to justify the gain, but to what end? That's why I've been trying to put together a talent showcase for those who need extra exposure. It's going to be a small production thing. It'll be paid, I swear. And not with exposure either. Though it won't be much at first, because I don't have that much money ready to use at the moment, so... Um, wait. This is a bit sudden, don't you think? No pressure, though. How does the show work? Well, I'm not 100% sure of the shape of it yet. But ideally, it will have, like, an interview at first, and then I'll record your singing. I'll bring all the gear. I will also be doing the, all the editing and stuff. It's gonna take a bit of time since I still have my main show to do. But I did start my vlogging journey on my own too. So I can bet you the result will still be quality. Your show will tank if I'm the first guest. You realize that, right? If it does, then it doesn't deserve to exist. I don't care about haters, but you do. That's why I won't push you. Ah. I'm 
flattered. But, no thank you. Okay. Thanks for considering me, though. Thanks for giving it a thought. <sighs> Looks like I have to go. Okay. <coughs> it's nothing to do with what you said, okay? Just bad timing. Yes, I get it. Cool. I hope we can meet again like this. If you want to. Maybe. I'll take it. Thanks for your time too, Hugo Hip Hugo Tidor. Sorry if I bored you. <laughs> no, truly, it was my pleasure. Cool. Um, okay, I really have to go. See you around. Safe trip. Alrighty. See you, Hugo Tidor. Come again soon. <laughs> I think tonight was the most I have talked in the past two years. And I'm quite glad to hear that. Thank you, Hugo Tidor. For what? For being such a good host. I know I'm not the easiest being to get along with. It's always a pleasure to have you and everyone around. Hmm. Then I'll be taking my leave. I feel like I have a lot to rethink. But I'll see you again soon. And we'll be waiting, always. Safe trip, Miss Fiona. And have a good night. Phew! I think I'm done for the night. I hope everything will work out for everyone. <sighs> you know, I think after all that, I need a drink. I'll be right back. On that note, that's gonna be it for this episode of Let's Play Coffee Talk, Episode 2, Hibiscus and Butterfly. Thank you all for watching. My name has been Jasirium, and I will see you all in the next episode. Until then, goodbye.